What is up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with George Truly, the Scarander, and today we got ourselves a match against CB Hulk. And this is a guy who I've been battling like as feels like forever. But this guy is definitely one of the toughest people I know. He's a very, very good any tier battler. And what I mean by that is that he's very competent whichever tier we go at. And I train with this guy in UU and OU to be well better, at least. I am actually awful at those tier. But um, to, to my stream, I had actually NU RU only, so the highest tier was for him to go for RU, of course. I looked at his team, he's got a very, very potent RU team here with Pangoro, Dalfox, Mega Sceptile, Hillisk, Jellicent, and Weezing, which is only NU poke. And I can see Weezing actually helping out a lot here because it has two weaknesses to uh, ground and has two that resist that. And Weezing is definitely like the main Pokemon to actually soak that up. Plus, Weezing is like one of those defensive pokes that's just going to take it all, really. I myself is using somewhat of a joke team. It's serious, it really is. But for example, my Explode is not fully IV'd. I did realize that throughout this battle, I just wanted to use Explode again. Other than that, I got Machoke, I got Embo, uh, Mega Banet, and Sligo. No, it's called something else. Who cares? I call it Slugger. Um, and I got uh, Scum Hinder or Flame Hinder. And basically, uh, I had no game idea. I know I have to overpower my player as fast as I can because I definitely lack the power to do so. So if I play aggressively, I hope to get enough momentum to be able to win eventually. And um, my only way to go at it was definitely to bring my x which is um, actually a scarf set. It's made to do as much damage as possible before going down. And since its IVs are eh, in defenses, it's kind of good that it goes down fast and just do damage. So with all this in mind, let's go. So yeah, like I said there, I'm just going to start with Explode. Explode can do major damage to his team, plus with Scarf it is able to outspeed a lot of things in his team. So I was definitely definitely very cocky here. And he starts wheezing, which is actually kind of great, because now I know he'll switch out his Jellicent. And I have no super effective damage. Hell, Boombirds does enough to be called super effective damage, to be honest. And um, this Jellison takes it, I won't lie here, a bit too good for my taste. And um, Gastrodon is back in my team, he's definitely you know, my go-to guy depending on what he does. He will have no reason to go for a will o -Wisp, consider the situation after all. So I do decide to go to my Slugger, the Gastrodon, and uh, he actually go for a Scald, which is great, actually he's my Stone Raid after all. But I didn't have it in me to go for either Earth Power nor Skull, consider his team build, so I just decided to go for a Toxic. Because I really need his Yellison down, like that is the only thing stopping, well, my x to kind of work. So we go for Delphox here, and you know, that's the correct play, it really is. I, he's definitely forcing me out here, because obviously I can't take a Solar Beam or a Gross Nut, that's what it carries. So my opponent is very ballsy here, as I will go for a side shock. Like I said, I am forced to push up because Solar Beam is here, or at least that is kind of what I predicted. Uh, he, like I said, is very ballsy, goes for the side shock, and with a crit, it is almost close enough to take me out actually. So now I know I can't really use my expert anymore. I'm just gonna follow it up with a last effort boom burst. He will switch out though to Jellicent, and um, yeah, now at least I can take give away two. Pretty nifty, strong boom bursts here, and like you shatter the ground, and really, really goes what? And yeah, I mean it is roughly, of course, not really enough. But in you know, in cases of a Jellison being especially special defensive bulky, I at least get it down to range where it really doesn't pay off for him to cannot keep it alive, which open up a lot of varieties from my side, and I can actually start to really come in and dent his team. Uh, so the Jellicent, major issue to get it with Weezing, of course. So I'm actually gonna go to my Embor or Hador. Hador is a shiny, reckless, scarfed Embor. And seeing his HP there, I know their Flitter Blitz will be more than enough. And, um, yeah, I'm very cocky here. So I go for Flitter Blitz. He could switch, switch out to the Weezing, which is not a bad play because that is his defensive wall. And uh, I don't care about those because I am an Embor and Hadar is definitely the guy. I was actually conflicted if I should go for a choice of band or choice of scarf, but I did realize Scarf puts it in a range where I actually can take it out, plus 20% boost in attack should be more than enough to do it KO a lot of things. And people tend to switch out on it, and that's a free hit. 
Had I been banded, yes, I'll probably take out the Pokemon in front of me, but that is a play I'm not comfortable with. I do score a burn here, which is super annoying for my opponent, because that means that I can actually stay in. I was actually sure I was going to outspeed this. I am not. I actually had 312 in speed. Obviously, Hillisk has much more speed than that. I think he's 334. And I should definitely have thought about that, but hey! <laughs> that's life. Hater goes down. So anyway, Jellison is here. I do get at least the switch momentum. And um, I'm just going to go right on at it to my Mega Bandit. I just, you know, priority, Shadow Sneak, get this thing out of here. I was kind of scared that he could switch out to... Uh, Oh, so called the hill list would be a normal type. It would kind of screw me over. It really would. But uh, he definitely decided to stay in, and I was really glad because at the stream there I was really like, "Oh, don't do that! I swear, if you do it, if you got me there, yeah, it's gonna be super frustrating." So anyway, crit shadow sneak obviously didn't matter, but hey, he took it out, and the Scepter is there, and um, yeah, I have nothing to face this thing on. I have nothing that can outspeed it either, which means that I only have one real strategy here. Get it down to a decent amount of HP and then take it out, or at least try to take another poke in to take it out. So I go for the Will-O-Wisp, because why the hell not? He go for the Deep Pulse, and it will do, I guess, fair amount of damage. Um, my Bennett is super bulky, so I do decide to go for a Pain Split here. Actually thinking, I can't really stress this enough, that the Scepter had more HP, it really hadn't. I got like, what was that, 7? Yes! <laughs> awesome play! Uh, it's obviously here, he will get the Giga go in, but this time it's actually worthwhile to, for me to go for a pain split. And you know, he sees what I'm doing, I'm basically, this is one kind of stalling, you just can't get around. I, like I said, I just need this thing's HP to go down, I really really don't have any necessary means to kind of take it out with being a Bennett. So, yeah, I'm basically gonna force it to run 50%. I am actually able to score another Shadow Sneak crit here, which is, well, kind of terrible to be honest. But, he will go for the Giga Drain, which means that the burn will not take him out. So luckily for him, uh, he does stay alive here and force me to actually bring the Fletch Hinder, because I really don't want the Giga Drain to kind of bring him back on track and being 4 times resistant kind of helps me with that. Plus, I have Acrobatics. And Acrobatics has, you know, like Gale Wing and all, has one priority, which is super important. Fletch Hinder is the Sceptile Killer. It, it is that simple. You need this thing in RU. So, anyway, he's gonna go to Hill. He's actually gonna fake me out here, trying to force me out. He's not even gonna go for Bolt Switch. He's gonna just pull out clean double switch. But I'll actually stay in because I'm focused, sashed, and have Swords Dance. So, I just go for that. Yeah, super, super cocky of me, I know. But um, he is gonna go for a side shock here, and it is actually not enough to bring me down to my sash, which I found very strange. But then again, I think it's a more defensively built one, and I have two times Bra or two times Swords Suns now, so I have no reason not to attack. And of course, Fletch Hinder might not be the strongest thing around, but hell, acrobatics. You know, if I lose my focus sash, this thing would have hurt for real, like really real. But now it's just um is 55 base attack with stab which is actually not enough to take out an heal risk and I was definitely aware of that I really feel my opponent did the right play though by double switching because he could have got a lot of more momentum if I switched out to uh, my oh, how's it called my Gatrodon and actually got a momentum from there so I do I know exactly what he was going at and I think that was a direct actually be the right move to do because I got a ground type after all. So anyway, he's locked into Dark Pulse, and you know, I can take that any day of the week. And I just go for a Mega Kick, just for the hell of it. I have actually punched a Mega Kick, I'm just gonna say that guys. We are punishing Mega Kicks. So anyway, Pangoro is coming in, this is his last poke, and Pangoro cannot take out him if you like Machoke. And uh, of course, my Machoke being a female, pretty ugly one, he is gonna call it Selfie, because why? Because he's ugly as a Selfie. So the Mega Punch will be more than enough to take out the Pangoro, and that is GG, people, so that's a 3-0. And, Jim, um, it was actually a closer game than it looks like. It really, we had an even matchup right into the very end, where I actually got the momentum with the Fletch Hinder. And, of course, the crit with Bandit really, really helped out. Bandit was definitely the MVP here, to be honest. So I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this battle, and I'll definitely do it. See you, Hulk. 
Awesome match, man. Thank you so much for this battle. And definitely was one of those battles that I do, do appreciate because there's a lot of weird stuff going on. Plus, I got to utilize what I just can call weird sets and seeing if they utilize well. And I'd say some of them did. Definitely Fletch Hinder against Sceptile was was very needed because, hell, we have nothing that really can outspeed neither Mega Pidgeot nor Sceptile. So having something that has priority with weakness inbound, it's it's pretty important. It really is. Plus, my banner coming through was very important. It really was. So, anyway, guys, I want to thank you, everybody, for watching, as always. And if you like this battle, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new to this channel, hell, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky is the limit. So, good, guys, and take care, right? Bye.